Hi everybody, for those of you that have been out golfing, amazing. For those of you who haven't, please be patient. It is well worth it when you get back out there. Now today I am interviewing Nick Solsky. He is the owner of a driving range called Boomers and Swingers. I'm really interested to see how this lockdown has affected him and how he fits in with the when to open and when not. So take a listen. Hi everybody, I have got Nick Solsky today, who is the owner of Boomers and Swingers Driving Range, which opened on Monday. Can you introduce yourself, Nick? Tell us a little bit about yourself. You're not just an owner of the driving range, are you? At the moment, yes, I am. In the past, I've done, done some different things. I've managed some golf clubs uh, uh, across Eastern Europe and Russia. Um, fellow of the PGA, certified club manager, um, but now, yeah, you're right, back to owning a driving range in Manchester. So just finished doing the morning ball collection after yesterday's busy first day. So yeah, excited to see what today brings. So tell us a little bit about your driving range. Um, I've been a couple of times and I wouldn't say it is your average driving range, to be honest. I'd hope not. If it was, I'd be really disappointed. <laughs> the, whole, the whole point of it is that it's not, it's not about golf. Here. I want it to be. Uh, I want it to compete with uh, entertainment centres and leisure centres and places where people go to just have a bit of fun, really. So it's not for just golfers. If golfers want to come here, that's great. We've got great mats. We've got two-piece balls, full distance uh, simulators where you can get all your all your distances. But for anybody who just wants to turn up and wax some balls, we've got metal targets. Um, there's no flags out there. So when people hit a bad shot. You can get rewarded by making a beer barrel go ting. Yeah, when he says metal targets, he's got tanks. So you've got to be pretty bad at golf to miss a tank the size of that. So uh, yeah, I didn't want to bring that up first. I'm, I'm glad you said it first because, well, this is the thing if you go to a golf course and you hit, let's say you hit 20 bad shots, one might go in the hole. But if you hit 20 bad shots here, five might hit a tank. Now, which one are you going to go home and tell your friends about? Yeah, I've never got it in the dish in the uh, washing machine, which I'm highly disappointed about. And my <laughs> friends have, and they brag all the time. So yeah, in my opinion, it's one of the best introductions to a form of golf that you can get. So well done in that respect. Now, talking about um, in line with golf, when lockdown happened at the end of March, did you have to do the same things as golf courses in terms of everything closing? We we actually did it before then. We are not governed by England Golf. We're not governed by the PGA, the RNA. We're, we're a standalone entertainment facility. So we've got to make our own decisions and show leadership, you know, as and when we decide. So we decided before England Golf closed all golf courses that we didn't feel that it was the right time to continue. And the way that we didn't have an operation in place where we could, you know, there was no social distancing at the time. It was, it was a little bit of a confusing time. So we, we made the decision just to, you know, cut it on the... Uh, Put it on 22nd of March, I think it was. So, yeah, we weren't, weren't affected in the same way as golf courses. And in the same way golf courses reopening, um, we, you know, we made our own decision to reopen when we were, we were happy that we'd got all the procedures in place to keep everyone safe. Yeah, was that tough, I suppose, not have any, anybody to speak to? Did you, did you talk to any of the general managers or did you just, I suppose, make your own decision? Because there was no governing body. It must have been... Quite interesting for you. No, and and well, even, even yesterday, the, you know, that we got a communication from the PGA saying that there, there's still no clear guidance on driving ranges, so you've pretty much got to make your own decision on it. Which that's that's how it's felt from day one. And you know, I've I've been around the golf industry long enough and know enough club managers, and we've got you know regular chats on on our forums on for the club managers and also PGA pros as well. So I guess you you get a little bit of advice from other people, and you can share that advice you know with them because. I'm lucky that I'm the sole decision maker here. So I don't have to report to a board. I don't have to report to a committee. I, I, you know, live and I die by the sword, basically. So there's been, what, eight, nine weeks of closures. How has your driving range coped during that time? Have you received any grants from the government? Um, you say you're not involved with England Golf, but I suppose you've had to furlough staff. What type of scenario have you put yourself in through that? Uh, we furloughed you know, a couple of the part-time staff that were here, um, so they've not done any any work on site, which has left me and my wife rather busy with painting and decorating and 
grass cutting. You've got to keep on top of the essentials. Um, so we've tried to buy some new mats and new balls and, you know, get things ready for when we, we could reopen again. Um, you know, we're very lucky to get the business rates grant from the government. Um, so that's that's definitely helped pay for pay for the, the income loss because March, April, May, you know, it's our three busiest months of the year. So, you know, to, we were 50% down in March, um, even before, you know, we closed. So that's definitely helped us uh, helped us through that period. But, you know, based on yesterday, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's a, it's a promising start and let's hope it's a golf boom continues for some time. Yeah, so when you say you've done a bit of painting and that, come on, tell us what you've really done. You've, you've gone to town these last few weeks, basically as a warm oh, show, yeah. haven't you? 100% yeah you, you've got to there's uh, 15 bays that needed painting there's the inside of the range needed painting we've plastered we've moved desks we've recarpeted we've new simulator screen yeah, everything that for the last four years I've wanted to do but we've been too busy working um, you know we've taken advantage and really tried to spruce the place up a little bit we've even got some little decorative trees as well so our driving range our grass tea actually looks more like Wentworth than uh, than anywhere in Manchester now. <laughs> so talk to me about the opening. Obviously, um, I saw some some driving ranges are closed, some open on Wednesday. You decide, decided to open on Monday. Um, how have you prepared with the guidelines? Describe the difference um, in entering your driving range now. I'm very lucky because my wife's a scientist, so her, her facility is, uh, they've got some fantastic health and safety people, so I've been spending a lot of time listening at home to her when she's on her uh, on her Zoom meetings and Microsoft Teams meetings about how their preparations are. So I, I've tried to go above and beyond on what would be necessary. Um, so there's a one-way entry and exit system now uh, at the front where we didn't have that before. We've got obviously the lines outside on the ramp coming up so that people have to queue before they're invited into the shop. There's no, uh, they don't touch the baskets. Unfortunately, they can't touch the red button either because our balls are dispensed by a big red button that you you bang and you get 50 out because we do unlimited balls. So, you know, people can help themselves all the time. So what we've had to do is we say to people, pay by contactless, walk to your bay. We'll bring the balls up to you, serve you, and then leave them to it. Yeah, so I suppose they can't go on the simulator because that'll be inside. They can't rent clubs yep. anymore. Um, and no, nope, none of them. Yes. Yeah, so, so how has it been? How was the first day? It was really good. Really good. It was uh, very diverse. That's that's the, the word that I, I said last night when I went home to my wife. It was, I, I've watched golf courses open this week, uh, sorry, last week. And, you know, it, yesterday we saw a lot more of the, let's say, non-regular customers, really. We, you know, we, got, we had lots of new people coming in, which is great. And it wasn't just your average white middle-aged guy you know driving a jag you know the stereotypical like golfer you know we had uh, lots of ladies in yesterday um we had ages ranging from seven years old all the way up to you know probably 80 so it was a fantastic diverse mix of people who came yesterday and that's what that's what we aim to do here we're not looking for you know one one demographic of, of uh, customer you know we want to be open to all and um, did everyone behave with their social distancing they didn't have a chance not to. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, everyone was, everyone was very, very cautious and you know very respectful to each other. You know, there was there was still the interaction between people. Um, you know, on bays next to each other, which is you know absolutely encouraged. You know, the the mental health is just as important as the physical health when you when you come to driving ranges as well. And you know, having a chat on the bay next to the person on the bay next to you and giving them a couple of tips and keep the head down and keep the left arm straight and keep your right knee bent and all these all these things they like to tell each other uh, they still did that but they they kept the distance away so yeah it was good to see the uh the, you know the social distancing in place but also still the interaction there yeah i think the atmosphere it must be nice to see it come alive again absolutely yeah no it was great it was it was probably about two o'clock actually i came outside and it was because i've been looking at an empty driving range for the past you know eight weeks it's been it was good to see every single bay full you know, people whacking balls, balls flying everywhere, you know, some into the canal at the back, some into the field next door, um, you know, some even into the skip, which was nice as well, hearing that sound again. And yeah, it was, it was good to see the good to see the place alive. Yeah. And I suppose also it's good if, if you are a, a past customer to think, oh, wow, it's changed since I've come back. I suppose a lot of golf courses aren't in 
the state that they need to be because they can't be because of all the furlough yeah. staff. But your driving range has stepped up. It's got brand new mats. It's got brand new golf balls. So there's a definite change, um, which, is, which is great. And hopefully people will come back from that. So with your... Well, and, oh, sorry. Sorry, no, they, 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 we had to do that. There's no way that we could stand still. And this is where we're, again, we're in a lucky position compared to golf courses. There's only so much you can do to a golf course. You know, they couldn't add in another nine holes. They couldn't add in, you know, extra bunkers and, you know, tees and greens. They, they couldn't really dramatically change their existing product. But what we wanted to do is enhance it because when people walk through the door now, we're not looking at them as a customer who's just going to come for one visit. I've got to think about what's going to happen in, you know, in, in October on a rainy Tuesday, you know, what are they going to do? I need them to come here. I need them to come and whack balls under a roof. So I need to think of them as a, you know, a long-term customer. So I've got to invest in, you know, the product and, you know, really sell the brand to them so that they, they keep coming back even when, even when it's uh, raining and cold. We've got to develop that habit, I guess. Yeah, I, I saw that it rained last night and I was quite excited, <laughs> um, which is a bit sad, I know. Um, talking with like your general manager head on, there's no doubt that golf is in a great position now as it's one of the only sports and activities that people can go and do in a family or even just do in general. What position do you mm. think that they're in and how can they you know, take advantage of it, the golf industry? The words that you've used worry me a little bit because when you said, golf is in a great position because it's the only sport that's open. Is that the reason why golf's doing well? That, that really, it, it does concern me. There's no competition at the moment from any leisure activity. You know, it's very easy to get into habits. And I think over the last eight weeks, cycling and, you know, walking and jogging is really, people have built that into their regular, you know, regular schedule. They, you know, every, every night at six o'clock, do they go for a bike ride? Yes, they probably do. Now golf's open again. It's doing great. And, you know, we see all the courses are full and, you know, we can't get a tea time and memberships are up 10, 15%. How, is that, how does that sustain when everything else opens? You know, the governing bodies have done a great job lobbying, you know, the government to try and open golf first. And I'm really pleased that it did open first because what would happen if it opened at the same time as everything else? How, how would the courses have been full? Or would the, you know, the newly developed habits of cycling and walking and family time allowed one member of the house or two members of the house to go out on their own you know for four or five hours I don't know I'm, I'm not I'm not sure that's the case and this is where what we're trying to do now is when our when our customers come in we're trying to sell the customer journey to them over the long term so when people come and whack balls at tanks that's a great start but if they're coming as a family or they're coming mother and daughter you know dad and lad we want to make that into a regular habit of theirs. And how do we grow them? We don't want to send them to a golf course. You know, my job's not to, you know, not to save golf courses and create customers for them. So I want to develop them onto the simulator so that in the winter they can book the simulator for an hour and play, you know, the Fairyland Disney dinosaur golf course on that, or they can play Augusta. I, I want them to become simulator golfers because to me, golfer is not a term where you just go and play 18 holes. When I was working in Russia and Ukraine, if somebody came to the driving range, we gave them a card that says, you are now a golfer. Because then they could say to other people, I'm a golfer because I've hit a golf ball, rather than I'm a golfer because I've played 18 holes in under 80, and I've got less than an 18 handicap. And that's where, that's where golf needs to really be aware of you know, the, the difficulty that it's going to have in keeping these people. Because when you transition from, let's say, a driving range to a, a golf course, it just takes one bad experience. If you're on the golf course and it's full and you lose a ball and then you, you duff one, the group behind are, are straight, straight on you. And golfers, dare I say it, they're not the most forgiving people. You know, if they're slow play in front, they'll let you know about it. Whereas if you go skiing down a mountain, you know, the, the emphasis is on the expert skier or the better skier to avoid the, you know, the novice skier who might make a mistake. You've got to presume their mistakes. I think golfers are a little bit less forgiving. So, I'm hoping that, you know, this, this trend of, you know, new members and golf courses being full um, survives and, you know, good luck to the golf courses in, in coming up with the efforts and the you know, strategies that they'll need to need to keep that. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, members are being quite friendly at the minute. I'm, at, I'm shocked. I'm hoping it'll last. Um, really good. Yeah. So in terms of golf lessons, you so just go, you just go wearing the wrong color socks and you'll see how friendly they get. Yeah. With, with your golf lessons, if, can you see anything, 
changing from this um yeah from this lockdown type coming back so you, i assume that you're going to start your golf lessons soon but no group lessons for a while no 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 group lessons um we're going to do individual lessons starting from next monday and i, I guess it's going to be whacking a lot of people from a distance with an alignment stick there's going to be a lot of poking and a lot of prodding and you know demonstrating and using using technology showing them on a on a bigger screen rather than ipad because obviously you can't get too close to people um but judging by some of the swings i saw yesterday there's going to be a great demand for golf lessons <laughs> um and finally what would you say to somebody that you know lives reasonably close to astley and, and wants wants some entertainment where would you tell them to go Definitely the traffic centre, definitely. It's, uh, it's great there. They've got that. No. Come on, wax and balls at tanks. You know, if, you've, if you hit a bad shot and it makes a metal, metallic sound, you know, you, you, you'll, you'll really enjoy it and we'll make you feel welcome. We might take the mickey out of you a little bit, you know, if you've got a really bad swing, but we'll also, you know, walk up and down, give you some swing tips. Um, and we'll make sure the customer journey is good from start to finish and you'll go away having a good experience that you want to share with others. Great, thanks Nick. I will let you reopen to the masses. 10 o'clock this morning, I believe. All the golf balls are picked up? Most of them. We've not been inside the skip yet, and I think there's a couple in the washing machine, but I'll save those for the weekend, I think. <laughs> All right, thanks very much for your time. Yeah, Sophie. Thanks, Nick. Boomers and swingers doesn't sound like golf to me, which is probably why it's appealing. Thank you all for watching. Uh, if you've liked this video, please click the like and the subscribe button and comment below. I'll see you next time.